Good morning, everyone. Can you all hear me well? Yes or yes? All right. One, two, three person can hear me good. Awesome. What you guys do over the weekend? Um, last week, we all kind of like got released from jail. We could travel out of state. Um, where'd you guys go? Anyone went anywhere outside of KL last weekend? Anyone? Tell us where you go. Did you all go, go outside anywhere outside of KL last weekend? Someone went Melaka, awesome. Balik Kampung. Where's the Kampung, Nauda? Melaka, awesome. Where else did you go? I don't know, you guys. I was I was so so excited to like yesterday yesterday morning after my um, after doing something early in the morning. I decided to my wife, let's just take a drive, go to uh, Bukit Tinggi, and I went to Bukit Tinggi for lunch. Um, it was so nice to be able to drive outside of your taman or your place that you stay, and then go like a long distance and come back. Um, I felt suddenly I was back to some normal normality in how we do our our daily life. So I went to Bukit Tinggi and I, and I opened my window and I saw the greens, I drive in the kampong. It was a very nice feeling um, that we're all back, we all back into um, some sort of a good positive uh, you know, way of doing things that we get to rest. And sometimes it's important to get out of our house and, and, and go and do something to make ourselves feel better. So I, I did that over the weekend uh, to Bukit Tinggi. So it was, it was quite fun. My second question to you guys, when you all grow up as a child or when you're growing up, some of you are, have grown up, uh, I have grown up a, a very long time, but in your childhood times, what was the favourite cartoon or favourite cartoon character that you all can remember? Anyone? You all watch cartoon when you're, when you're kids, no? What was the favourite um, cartoon uh, character that you all have? Pokemon. Jetsons, Transformer, all right, Autobots. Okay, this is probably safe. Donald Duck, Gems, Tomato Man. What is Tomato Man? My Little Pony, I remember that. What else? Tomato Man, I, I'm not sure why it's Tomato Man, but I, Pink Panther. Uh, what else? What, what do you all remember? What's your favorite cartoon that you guys remember? Like the fa favorite cartoon character. If I, if I ask you right now, another question I ask you right now, what? How do you? How do you uh, tell yourself if you if you were to, to be a favorite cartoon character, which cartoon character would you be? Tell us, tell me, or tell all of us what cartoon character would you be? If you have a choice right now, tell me. Tom. Tom as in Tom and Jerry, Papa Smurf. Okay, you want to be Papa Smurf? Who else? What? Peter Griffin. Hey, he'll be, I don't know who is all these people. Like you, you, a lot of this, I don't know who they are. Betty Cooper, okay. What else? What else? Peter Griffin, yeah, I don't know. Peter Parker, I don't know. Peter Griffin, I don't know. Who else? What, what, what is the cartoon character that you want to become Scooby-Doo or someone want to become Fred Flintstone? Okay, who else? What else? What, what other cartoon character that you want to become? Scooby Doo, awesome. Now, my I think as I reflect um, in this season, you pin, I pin, I didn't watch yet lah. Do not my time lah, not right, not my time. Uh, Popeye, if you eat the if you eat the vegetable, you become strong. Okay, spinach. Okay, so for me in this season, in this journey, when when we are all embracing technology, right? You know my my favorite cartoon. I was thinking about yesterday. My favorite cartoon character that I want to become right now. Guess who is Doraemon? I, I want to become Doraemon right now. Do you all know why I want to become Doraemon? I, I hope it's nothing to do with my looks, but I wanted to look at big, becoming Doraemon because Doraemon always have the big pocket. Remember the pocket? And, and every time Nobita see Doraemon, um, he's got he's got a problem and he will come to Doraemon crying in his big eyes, you know, the Japanese cartoon. Um, I think Doraemon is ranked number eight in terms of the most watched Japanese cartoon ever um, in the history of Japanese cartoon. Um, and I remember when Nobita has a problem, he always go to Doraemon and look at his, and ask Doraemon, I've got this situation, can you solve for me? And 
and Doro somehow somewhere uh, Doraemon will open his pocket and will take out a tool and say there you go that's the problem this will solve your problem you remember that have you all watched those things um I, I I want to do something here I don't have any take out some from the pocket and there you go this is your solve this one will solve your problem you can either uh grow fatter ga, grow thinner ga, whatever so that pocket right I don't know how much things he has inside there but he seemed to be very powerful because he can bring a lot of solution in his pocket. By the way, Doraemon, for, for, a, for the longest time in my life, I didn't know what kind of... what what I thought Doraemon was actually, uh, uh, what do you call it, an uh, uh, alien. But actually, some my, later on, my wife told me that Doraemon is a cat. I didn't know that, okay? So Doraemon is actually a cat. Um, but this cat got a lot of tricks in his back, in his pocket, right? He can just pull out and then he can solve a problem right now. So today, we want to talk about... Um, how do you troubleshoot? How do you solve problems in the area of running campaigns uh, as we are running a lot of campaigns right now? Because I think our, our focus in this couple of months have been like, how do we drive campaigns? How do you help agents to, to run campaigns? And some of us will go through certain challenges, certain problems, um, and a lot of issues that we have. And I want to highlight the word troubleshooting. Right, Troubleshooting is a very important word. Now, it was being used a lot during the old Windows days where certain things were not really working 100%, right? Certain things were not working 100%. So when you troubleshoot or when, you, when, when, when the technology keeps on evolving and changing, um, there were new solutions that was coming up. And sometimes when your computer got no sound, your computer got no picture, right? You click on a certain button, you can troubleshoot and see, hey, have you connected this cable? Hey, have you done that? Have you done this? And the reason of troubleshoot, the, the, the focus on troubleshoot is to focus on three key things, right? Three key things, I want to write this down. Whenever you're going through trouble right now in this particular uh, journey in campaigns, I want you to remember three key things that you should be reflecting. Number one, you first must identify what the problem is, right? You, you first, in order to, the, the word is called troubleshoot. Means you shoot the trouble. Don't shoot people. The people is not the trouble. Find what the trouble is, right? A lot of times when we want, when we have a problem technology, we will try to blame others or blame other things. But the goal is to troubleshoot means Look at the problem, shoot it, right? So identify what's the problem. Figure out, look at the situation and identify what's the problem. Later on, I will draw a chart and I will share with you where potentially some problems could be, right? And then we will have a discussion on that. Number two, once you identify, you clarify what really is the problem. You clarify it and you try to ask a lot of questions. The word clarification means asking questions. Why is like that, huh? Why is my KW API not connected? Why am I not getting response? Why am I not seeing the leads in my context? Why am I not seeing the numbers coming to my phone? You must ask why. Clarifying is probably very important. Um, when we don't clarify enough, we don't have that curiosity. I will encourage everyone to start your journey or start that approach of being curious, not being frustrated. When you're being frustrated, it's very hard to find problems. It's very hard to listen and see and identify challenges, clarifying challenges. And once you identify and you clarify these issues that you have, then you go to the third step. You then rectify or modify. Now, rectification means there was a mistake done. The mistake could be also, A, hey, we train you the wrong thing possible and the right rectification is to clarify us so that we rectify together with you maybe we have taught you the wrong things maybe we have to train you the wrong things maybe we have led you in the wrong perspective when you are running the campaigns right so rectification is to correct right to correct this um um as as we go along the way but there are certain things you don't need rectification you need modification right either you rectify or modify modify means you pivot certain things that is not working. You change certain things to make things better. The word modify signifies progress. And the way you measure modification is you measure what is the progress and the outcome. And in order for you to measure, 
you need time. You need to have a, a, a reasonable amount of time and certain standards to measure and say that, hey, is my modification working or not? Right? So three things, remember, number one, you must identify what the challenge is, what the problem is, right? Number two, you must uh, clarify what the problem is. You identify that, hey, I'm not getting connection right now. You identify that. Then you go and clarify, did I do, what? why is this happening? What is this something that I must change? Then the third thing is once you clarify, you identify, you either modify or rectify. Understand, guys, that's the approach I want you all to have right now. You wrote this down. I want you to approach the way you approach technology this way because it's a journey to learn. Sadly, unfortunately, um, Doraemon don't exist in our world. If you have a problem with campaigns, I wish there is a Doraemon here that we all can just go to and then he gives us a, what do you call that? A, what do you call that? He gives us a, a, a tool that we can solve the whole problem, but it doesn't exist, right? So these are the three key things as I start this morning. I want us to sink in um, very hard. Because if you want to learn and become the better version of yourself, it doesn't matter whether it's this technology or not, it's important to have this three thinking mindset or this three approach in how you want to progress. When you do this way, you actually ask, you actually become the better version of yourself. Right? If you study the greatest athletes in the world, they will be studying themselves every day. They will be looking at videos, watching their competitors, watching how they, pick, how they lose and how, how they won the game. They will study and identify, and then they clarify why does that happen, and then at the end of the day, they either rectify it or they modify it to make it better. Because in this new era of economy or this new era of business, if we don't get into this mode, it cannot help us to be competitive. Because competition is necessary for growth. Competition is necessary for progress. If we don't put on a competing mindset, we are not putting ourselves in a position of success. Competing with yourself. And sometimes it's competing with others. But sometimes it's competing with yourself. There's a great uh, show. I think I would encourage everyone, those who have Netflix, right? Go watch this um, documentary. I think it's called Coach the Coach. It's about all, they, they, they actually interview all the top coaches of sports um, in the world, from basketball to soccer to football to American football. They actually interview these coaches. And these coaches talk about how they think about themselves and how they think about the process of winning. And it's always about being better. It's always about progressing. It's always about competing. And you will come to a point when you are already ahead of your competitor, the, late, the, the nearest competitor that you have is yourself. How can you be a better version of yourself than you were today, tomorrow? Because when you, don't, when you stop competing, when we stop progressing, we take the risk of losing out in our business. Right? So progress is very important. Progress will support us to drive our business forward. It will be a good um, a journey to have when you are always progressing. So being competitive is necessary. Competing is necessary. If you are not competing, if you want to have a Doraemon exist, uh, it doesn't exist. So, so, so Doraemon don't exist in our, in our life here. There is no magic pill. There's no one place we go to and we get all that we can uh, to succeed. It doesn't exist. It all requires us to compete. When we compete, we become the better version of ourselves. And that's that's more important. That's the, that's the way of us building success is when you are able to be better version of yourself every single day. Some of the things that I would encourage all of you when I, when I actually coach younger, younger people, I, I do some work volunteering to, to support younger generation people in the business and also in work. And I always tell them this every single day in your life, you wake up in the morning, be grateful for something. And at the same time, ask yourself this question. What have you progressed today? Or what will you progress today? What will you improve? That 1% improvement per day, that 0.1% improvement per day will increase the opportunity for you to be successful because you are progressively progressing on a daily basis. If you are not progressively progressing on a daily basis, someone else will. And they are called a competition.
And in this business realm that we are in right now, competition is getting faster, harder, and bigger, right? So we need to think about it along, along the way. So remember, identify your problem, clarify what it is, and rectify or modify in order for you to solve the problem. Okay, then the question is, how do then I start in the area of campaigns? What should I think about? What should I look at when I look at campaigns and see that, hey, how can I, is there a model for me to think about? So I'm going to go to my screen right now. I'm going to go to my, can you all see my white, whiteboard? Okay, you can see, yeah. So the way I, I, the way I identify campaigns is first, we need to understand what are the components that will, is crucial in order for a campaign to run. If some of this is missing, right, your campaign potentially can be incomplete, right? So let me draw a simple um, drawing here so that you can see, right? So in the center of your, all of us are trying to run campaigns. Right? You're all trying to run campaigns here right now. Let me just try to zoom in a little bit. Okay. Um, so I, I break campaigns into two parts. One is a technical part and one is an application part. The technical part, I believe there are three key components. Right? The first component is your Facebook. Are you connected correctly on your Facebook? Are you connected correctly, right? Do you first have a Facebook? Now, if you all don't have a Facebook account and don't have a Facebook page, you'll be realizing you can't run campaign. I hope you realize today already that if you don't have a Facebook page, you don't have a Facebook account, you cannot run campaigns. Now, if you don't have this, it, won't, it really, really won't work. The second component that is important is how are you synced with your pricing? Are you synced with pricing right now on your phone so that your contacts can reach um, your phone. Are you seeing with that, with that already? Are you seeing that? Are you seeing in? Because PySync now is back online. If you sing your PySync, when your campaigns, uh, when your Facebook generated campaigns will go to contacts because PySync will then sync those contacts on Google Doc, uh, sorry, Google contacts so that your phone will have the that the contact automatically added into your phone through pricing, right? The last thing is payment. So these are what we call the foundational technical side, right? If you don't have these three key things in place, you can't run a campaign, right? Clear so far? Any questions so far? You understand this? Great. Now, once you finish that, once you have done all these three key things, which I put here as the technical aspect of it, then let's talk about the other two parts, which I think is crucial for a campaign. The other two parts, number one, will be how do you create an ad? Right? Creating an ad. Now, this is a problem here that I won't solve unless you have solved these three problems. Now, if you have solved these three problems, then let's look at creating ads. Now, the problem I see in ad creation, a lot of people ask creation is, um, the, it, it, the, the, the ad is not clear. The ad is unclear to the public, it's unclear to the consumer. It's not attracting the consumer. The objective of creating an ad is not to sell the property online. You cannot sell property online. You can get people interested in property and you can consult them and meet them offline, but you get their contact online first. So the goal of creating an ad is to help people to click on that ad to register and then you can then call them. Does that make sense so far? So the first thing you need to change in your mindset is not to create an ad to sell property. In fact, the ad is to sell yourself or is to give someone an opportunity to click and ask for more information. Whatever you do, your goal in this ad is to attract the right people to click on that particular ad so that these right people are the right potential candidates for your market. Does that make sense so far? You understand so far? I'm going to pause here. Any questions about this? 
The act is not to sell the property now. How I can see what's the difference between selling property and not selling property. Selling property would be, you put so many words inside there, you put so many things inside there that, that it just overwhelms the particular viewer. You put how many bedrooms, how many sizes, what, what, what. you put too many things there already. When there's too many things there already, right, it's not attracting me to click. There are only few things that I will click. Either it's the nice view, either it's something that is very beautiful. You need to attract that person. The picture is more important. The word says, that there's a saying says, the picture paints a thousand words. Have you heard before? Picture paints a thousand words, right? So the picture paints a thousand words. So don't, don't, don't put a picture and don't put 1,000 words there. It won't work. It won't work. Overwhelmed information cluttered in a particular ad will not help that person to look at it. You want people to look at it and try to understand what it is and then click on it. And you have three seconds to do that. Every, every person that scrolls on Facebook will scroll at it three seconds, the three second rule. You have three seconds to catch that person's attention. If, I, if you want to put captions in, I will put a very beautiful, nice house. I will say, don't click on this ad unless you want to save 20% market value. So that's what we call a hook point. So when you create an ad, you must ask yourself, hey, is this ad attractive to people to click? You remember, if, is this ad attracting people to help them see that, hey, this is something I, I might like, I might be interested in, right? So it all depends on the, the media that you put in, right? The media, the captions that you use, right? The media, the caption that you use, right? Of course, the target audience that you have, the target audience, what are the audience that you're trying to capture? What are the people? What are the audience that you want? Now, I'm gonna pause here and talk about audience a little bit. A lot of us, right, when they advertise the ad, you need to understand who is the audience that potentially you are trying to capture. Who are the audience? What kind of people are they? Imagine to see, hey, if I have a house right now in, I don't know, uh, SS2PJ, what kind of people would want to buy this house? You must imagine that right now. Now let's do some exercise. Anyone, anyone got any listing that you are planning to do uh, let's, let's, let's work with you right now. Anyone has a listing that you're planning to advertise on campaigns this week? Anyone? Anyone? Anybody? Anybody shout it out, put it in the chat box. Do you, are you planning to run a campaign for a listing that you have? Just put it in the chat box, I will work with you right now. Okay, Anita, go ahead, tell me what is it. Irene, Anita, go tell me what is it. Right in the chat, right in the chat box, what kind of listing? <laughs> SS2 semi D. Is that an old house or a new house? Is it a very old house, run down or renovated? Renovated. Uh, nicely renovated. Can move in already. Anyone? Yes, can move in already. Great. I, I'm sure that you need the night. The, the, the house is very beautiful, very nice. Right? Put but have obstacles, yeah. But let's just look at, let's just use this as a case study. It's renovated, it's very nice. So you should have a picture of that nice house renovated. You should take a very beautiful picture of the interior, right? Because the interior is probably gonna attract certain people, right? Um, now, I, I would look at running either a carousel of, of pictures, right? Or multiple ads that focus on different areas of the house. So for example, if the kitchen is nicely renovated, Bang, the kitchen will be one, one ad. If the, if the uh, uh, living hall is nicely renovated, bang, the living hall is one ad. Or you can have a carousel of all these pictures inside there. And the caption will sound something like this. Don't, cl don't click on this ad unless you are looking for the home for your family. Unless you are looking for a space to build your family or grow your family, right? And then if you can put a picture of a, a family picture of someone, a family picture of a, like, a, like a stock photo of a family um, at a corner there looking at the picture and you say that this will fit your family. Imagine cooking in this kitchen for your family during Chinese New Year. Imagine doing this. So that would be the kind of conversation when you put into that particular advertisement to attract the family people because you know that that, that kind of 
market is not the young guys. It's not the young people like me. I'm very young, right? So you may not attract me. But you're going to attract someone that is a little bit more mature. The ch children are probably uh, going to school or colleges already, or they're in a high school or maybe uh, uh, teenagers, right? So that would be the right target audience. Potentially, that would be the target audience. So if you understand that, that would be the caption. That would be the language. Does that make sense so far? Do you guys understand what I'm trying to say? It's all about understanding um, the, uh, the, 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 the audience that you have. Renovated, hassle-free. Imagine moving in with your, with your family, with your, with your handbags or whatever. And so you have to talk like that. You have to give that kind of impression that this house is ready for the family. So you have to take area pictures, focus on pictures that has family, protect, like family pictures, like go inside and show unique places where the family could enjoy. Does that make sense so far? Right. Um, someone added something else. Uh, I really want to do, uh, okay. Hugh, you want to look at Menara Duta Kondo. Right. So Hugh, who is, what do you think is the uh, target audience for your condo? What kind of people that you think is target audience? Is your target audience for Menara Duta Kondo? That is in Jalan Duta. Menara Duta 1 or Menara Duta 2? Which one? Hugh, are you still there? Hugh can pin. Now, one, the 1,006 square feet unit, right? Three bedroom, right? How much is it selling for? 500,000, 600,000, 1,007, there you go. How much is it selling for? 650K. So, who do you think is the target audience? What kind of people potentially may buy that unit? Who, who do you think will be the target audience? Anyone in this chat room, who do you think will be a target audience of a 1,700 square feet unit in Munara Luta, which is very close to Monkera and very close to KL downtown? Who do you think will be a target audience here? What kind of people do you think will buy? Anyone? You're very quiet. New setup family, yeah? Young professional just got married. Potentially, yes. Family younger ones, correct? New setup family, young professionals. So age between 30s, uh, late 20s to early 30s range, right? What's important for these people right now when they're young professional, when they're new set up for family? What's important? What's important for them? When I'm new, new young set up family, what's important? Daycare, what else? What, is what else is important? Space, what else? What else is important? Near to work, what else? So what would the messaging look like? 10 minutes to KLCC, five minutes to, I don't know, Monkera, right? Why pay more when you can own this for only 650? Why pay more? If you go back one street in Jalan Kiara for 1,700 square feet, you're going to pay between 1 to 1.2 million. Why pay more when you can own this for only 650K? Five minutes, 20, 10 minutes from KLCC, 10 minutes from Monkera, 10 minutes from Bangsa. Why pay more? Money is one issue, right? Lifestyle is another one. Security is another one. Good space. So a why pay more advertisement may potentially be a good hook point for people to look at it. Does that make sense so far? Are you understanding? So if you're a younger generation, right, then make sure that you are taking pictures that will give them that potential lifestyle opportunity. Right, the space is also lifestyle. Why pay more for a thousand square feet you need for 650,000 while you can, own, you can own this for 1,700 square feet where your family can be inside for a lower cost? Why pay more? So that would be a good potential caption. Are you guys learning something today? Right? Because this is attracting people. You've got to speak. You've got to speak to the message. 
You got to message in the right season for the right audience. If you just tell them this is a three bedroom house, nicely renovated, da, 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 it doesn't speak to them. It doesn't attract them. You must connect with that person's need, that person's psychological perspective of how they are living their life right now. Because a home is really, really um, very personal. It's really, really about them, not about us. And it's never about the property. Your message must speak to them, right? So creating the advertisement is absolutely the crit critical side. Your design is absolutely right. Putting ourselves in the audience shoes. You're absolutely right. If you don't put yourself in the audience shoes, you have to think through how would this audience think about this place? How would they be attracted? What is the thing that will help solve certain problems in their life by buying this home? You need to think through the audience in the market because every market, the audience is very different. Their needs are very different. Right, so you get to understand, and certain certain um, products. For example, if it was Anita's listing in SS2, if it's not renovated, what do you, what do you do there? This is a perfect house to rebuild for your family because it's not renovated. It's, it's, it's you, you have to spend a lot of money to redesign, create a space for your family, recreate a new space for a new journey in your family. Right, you can talk about captions like this that will attract people to watch and read. Right, so understanding audience is important. When you understand the audience, then only you decide, hey, what kind of picture should you put? Hey, what kind of um, uh, uh, caption should I put? So right now, for example, I'm running a, a, a campaign for recruitment, right? And I understand the number one pain point for most agents is leads. Now, if I show them an ad and say, hey. I can get a lead for a dollar thirty-seven, one more one dollar and thirty-seven cents uh, per lead, and you have done five thousand of them. Would you be interested to have a conversation so that I can support you to think about how to build your business increasing leads? Very clear, right? Because I know there are agents right now. All of us are struggling to get leads. If I can give them solution, if I can share with them a message, I don't have to tell them I'm the best company in the world. I'm the biggest company in the world. Those are not relevant at all. In fact, I have to show how nice my office is. It's not relevant at all. What is relevant is, is my product or services able to solve a problem that they have? The reason why people come and buy a property is because they've got a problem. Too much space, not enough space, or no space. Right? There is a problem. So if you understand that, is your product or is your listing potentially a solution for their problem. Does that make sense so far? Right? Now, after creating the ad, the ad is perfect. It's generating leads. The last component, which I think, in my opinion, is the most important component. This is where we all need a lot of help. It's called follow-up. You've got the perfect leads, you connect everything correctly, you've got a lot of leads coming in, but this is not working. You are, you are not following up. Now, because if, I, if you remember what I said earlier today, that if you put in an ad, your goal is not to, fall, is not to sell them on the spot. Your goal is to get the leads, consult them, understand what they want, show them some apartments, show them some listings that you have, or go and meet them for a listing, but you must know how to follow up. When the leads comes in, what do you do? Because this, to me, is the second most critical component. And this is where I see, personally, I struggle with as well when I do a campaign, because I don't have enough time to follow up. How many of you are running campaigns right now? You've got more leads that you have never called yet. How many? Let's be honest. How many of you have that right now? that you have a few more to do, that you have, you have a problem with following up, not enough time to follow up, or did not put a systematic way to follow up. Overwhelmed by leads. Now, that's a good problem, right? Last time, we were overwhelmed with no leads. Now, we are overwhelmed with too many leads, correct? Yes or yes? Awesome. So what do you do? What is the system that you think about follow-up? You must have a system in your head 
or write down a system, right? Or the other way is this, perhaps currently your capacity is not able to support that many leads coming in. Slowing it down is okay. Having the campaigns, if you're getting cost per lead at a dollar or 50 cents or 80 cents, maybe you can say, let's slow down the, the campaign, let's extend the campaign time, and let's, let's, let's lower the budget per day. So maybe every day I can get one or two leads, not five leads a day. If I get five leads a day, I cannot follow up in time. So you've got to adjust that yourself. But the next thing is you must have a systematic way. Is there a systematic standard message for this campaign? Campaign number one, like I'm only running campaigns for um, advertising, for, for looking for capping agents to join us, right? So I put in a, a campaign. And my standard starting point to follow up, number one, when I see a lead, automatically I will send a WhatsApp message. What is a WhatsApp message? Hi, thank you very much for registering for our uh, Facebook ads. By the way, this is the ad that you registered. So I will, I will first have a thank you note. Always start with gratitude, right? Then I will put a picture. Now, I do this because I don't have time to call everyone in the beginning. I just don't have time to call everyone every single day. I, I don't have that time. I don't have the leisure. So this is my style. I'm not encouraging all of you to do this, but I'm just sharing with you what is my system. My first one is, thank you very much for calling, uh, for, for registering uh, uh, this ad. By the way, this is the ad register. I will have a picture of the ad as a second message to show them that, hey, remember you registered this. By the way, when is a good time for me to give you a call so that we could have a Zoom 30 minutes to do a consultation on how um, you want to go forward in this or how can I answer those questions? So it's always three messages like this. Thank you very much for registering. A picture of the ad followed by um, when can I have an appointment with you to meet up? Now, that's my style. Don't use my style all the time. If you are selling property, important for you to call because that's your full-time job. That's your full-time job. But every time I do this, right, a lead come in, I just copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste, and send out. Then whoever responds to me first, I call. Right? I do that is because I don't have time, guys. My, if you look at my schedule, I start my day now 7.30. My first meeting this day was 7.30. All the way until tonight, my last meeting will end at 11 o'clock at night. Right? So I have a long day. I don't have enough time to call, so I can do this. But if you guys, your number one business is calling people and talking to people, you should time block every day a certain time to call these leads. Now, you can say by establishing this message first, and then let's say if, let's say if your time block for calling is from 9 to 11, let's say 9 to 11 in the morning, and every day is fixed 9 to 11, and you get this lead somewhere at 4 o'clock or 8 o'clock at night, send the message first, Right? Then put in your context a task to call them next morning. The, the important thing about follow-up is you must use the tools. If you can use the tools, use the tools. Your, 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 your needs will be in context, right? So the first thing I do always is I send a message. The first thing I will first tag the contact. I must tag the contact fast. Right? I give myself a standard every single day if I receive enough how many leads, by the end of the day, I must tag the context. So for example, if I send a message and there's a reply or no reply, I will tag the message, the contact as um, uh, rent prospect. I will put their rent prospect first. Right? And then if the person reply me and say that, hey, how much is this production? And now I will have a conversation. I will put agent in production of 100,000. I'll put it there. So there will be multiple texts. So tagging my contacts become a number one important thing because it helps me remember and know what kind of contact it is. Now, after I tag the contacts, if I need to do a reminder, or let's say I come, the, the contact comes in at five o'clock in the evening and I tag it, I will also put a task to remind me to call them tomorrow or the next day or the day that you set in your time block for your calling. You need to have time block for lead generating and calling, guys. You don't do it when you're free. You do it when you fix a time to do it. Because if you don't fix a time to do it, you won't do it. Trust me, you, you won't do it. So call them, call them in a task. Put them as a task to remind you. So when you open your command next morning at nine o'clock, because of all the leads you have been receiving for the past two days, these are the people you should call. And then you call them again. 
This is just a simple way of how you should be following up. I'm going to pause here. Any questions? Anyone got any questions? Any ahas you're getting right now? Any thoughts? Any thoughts? Put notes in your context. Note down certain key things in that particular context. If the agent is telling you or the client is telling you some information, please note it down. Maybe it's like I need to send a report of that market location for him. Maybe it's that, you know what, one of my follow-up tools is you can put a task there. Every single buyer that you have, you send them a market report of that location. That's one task. You can put it there. Send one task, market, send market, market research location. Send, send them that, that, the CMA report that you can print out from the age, right? And you can email it to them because you've got the email. Send them that and then call them and message them. Hey, by the way, you can send that particular report via WhatsApp as well. You don't have to send it via email. You send it via WhatsApp. By the way, I just want to send you this report of this market condition in this location. Boom, there you go. So that's a follow-up. That's a follow-up. People say, oh, they didn't answer their phone. Trust me, if I register for an ad right now, if I'm interested, you will, you will find it very hard to get me right now. Trust me, if you want to call me, right? if I'm the kind of people that you're looking for, you want to call me, very hard to find because I have no time. And I hardly respond. And I only respond to people that is potentially giving me value. People that I don't know. Now, all of you respond, call me, I will message because you're all part of our agent. I'm working with you guys, right? But outside of this circle, right? Outside of this circle, right? I don't have time to look at other messages. But you can call me and call me and call me, but I don't have time to answer because I'm actually busy right now. Like someone, if someone is calling me right now, which someone did just now, uh, probably it's a person who was following up on telemarketing from the bank or whatever, right? He's calling me. But I don't have time to answer because I'm talking to you guys. Successful people, people who have money, people who are rich. And I'm not saying I'm rich and I have a lot of money. I'm just saying that I'm, I'm busy working. I'm, I'm, I'm out of the norm. I, I'm working very hard, okay? But people who are busy, who are productive, right? They don't really have time to answer your phone. Just because they didn't answer your phone doesn't mean they, may not, they are not interested. Don't judge them until they say no to you. If you have this mindset, right? Send them information. Send them things that will attract them to respond to you. Send them a market report. Ask them, do, can I send you a market report of the house that you're staying right now? Do you want a free valuation report? Do you want a free consultation? Are you interested in a tour? You have, to, you have to engage and ask. Basically, you have to earn the right for that person to respond to you. you don't, they don't owe you anything, by the way. Just because they register, right? If they don't answer your call, they don't owe you anything. You understand what I'm trying to say? You as an agent, you have to compete for their time. You have to compete for their attention. Because if you come and expect that, oh, I register one ad, uh, this person play play one now. Uh, maybe he's just busy. Maybe he's just busy. Maybe he just didn't have time. And if you didn't engage him correctly in the right message, in the right clear, clear message on how you can give them value. Remember I told you, um, ask them, thank, tell them thank you very much, give them that picture of ad, by the way, this is below market price. I just want, to, want you to know if you're interested to have a look or have, have conversations about the property that you are in the market for, I'm here to help you. By the way, this is the, this is the market report for this particular property. Is there any ever, is there any other market report that you are looking for? Come from the point of contribution. If you don't engage, if you don't contribute with them, contribute to them, they won't respond to you. Now, I see many agents send me a message, Mr. Tan, you should, you should buy this, the best deal, this, the best deal, this, the best deal, this, the best deal. You are not, those people are not adding value to me. They are sending me things that I'm not interested in. If they send me a report, if they send me some potential options for me to look at, if they ask me questions, you must first create value. Yes, Charles, you must first create value. Whoever gives them value, you have a higher chance of responding or respond from the client. This is so critical here right now. The follow-up part is so critical. 
send them pictures, send them options, show them where this property is located. Be very transparent as much as you can so that they can see the value. I tell you what, most clients today don't like agents that tell them half things. For example, where is the house? Or oh, the house is somewhere in USJ3. Which part of USJ3? Next to the banana tree. Which banana tree? The one opposite the mango tree. And a lot of people don't like to say that. You, you, you've got to be finding, find a way to be transparent and, and meet this person and, and give them information that is relevant, right? That's relevant, right? So I'm going to pause here for a while. Any questions? You guys got any questions for me? It's not spamming, guys. Don't spam them. Don't keep spamming them everything. Ask them, do I have your permission? Ask them a question. Do I have your permission to call you tomorrow or day after tomorrow? Ask them permission. When you call them, even when you call them, you decide to call them, here's the script for you to call. Okay, the script is this. Ring, ring, good morning, Mr. Tan. Thank you very much for registering um, on this particular ad that we have on Facebook, which I just sent over WhatsApp to you. By the way, do I have your permission to speak to you for 10 minutes so that I can give some thoughts to you or so that I can help you see if this is a good opportunity for you? Right? Ask questions like that. When you ask the question, do I have your permission? If I ask you a question, hey, do I have a permission to speak to you for 10 minutes? What would you say? What would will, what will, what will your natural um, response be? If I ask you, do I have your permission? Can I have your permission to speak to you for the next 10 minutes? Normally, you will say yes, unless you're busy. I'm so sorry, I'm busy right now. I can't speak right now. Okay, when will be the best time where I can call you back? Because when you say you ask for permission, what are you doing? You are now empowering the client to decide whether he or she wants to listen to you or not. That's very powerful. And most people will say yes because logically it's, it, it helps, it, it gives, it, it, they feel better that way. Versus an agent or person calling them just bulldozing their way through, right? Do I have your permission for the next 10 minutes? And you manage the expectation saying that it's 10 minutes so that I can spend some time to kind of understand your needs and here is the question that I want to ask you. When you're following up, please don't sell them the property. Please ask them questions. If they're interested, when they give you answers for the questions, that is when you know that, okay, this guy, I think we can categorize him as A class buyer, B class buyer, C class, whatever you want to tag them, right? So always have that script ready. And this is a simple skill I gave you. Can I have your permission for the next 10 minutes to have a conversation with you about this opportunity that we benefit you mutually or that may potentially benefit you or can I understand better what are you in the market for so that I can better serve you and have the opportunity to serve you or you can ask can I have the permission to serve you in the next two weeks let me show you around when you speak this way right you are coming from contribution and in your mindset you're okay if that person don't buy in your head, you must be thinking, how can I serve this client better? How can I add value first? How can I give first? When you come from that contribution mindset, it's very hard to reject contribution. Let me tell you this, it's very, very hard, right? Unless I really don't want it or I'm not ready for it, then you know potentially maybe he's not ready for it, right? So that's following up. And this is where the work is. Majority of the work done from an agent, follow up. And I see so many room for improvement in follow up. How many of you agree if you increase your effectiveness in follow up by 30 to 40%, your business will change? How many of you agree? Right. Question to you What's stopping you from increasing that follow up? What's stopping you? If you identify this, right, and you clarify this, what's stopping you from changing the way you run things in follow-up? What's your number one hurdle? Anyone? Put in the chat box. What's your number one hurdle in following up? Uh, 
Come on, anyone. What's your number one challenge in following up? Or what's the number one problem you have in following up? Anyone? That's not technology, by the way. Following up is not technology. Thought they are scared for fun or click at our ads. Maybe. Scared of rejection. Absolutely. What else? What else? What is, what is stopping you from following up? Totally quiet, totally quiet, no response at all. What else? To engage in a chat or conversation for more than one minute, absolutely. Maintaining their interest must overcome rejection, absolutely. Response from client to my question, you don't know how to respond, good. What else? So first thing is, I want to encourage everyone here, when you do a follow-up call, when you do a call, always ask yourself, how can you add value? What is a systemic way? First of all, send a welcome, a thank you message. You, you have to think of your own system that works for you. For me, this is what I do. Thank you message. Always start with gratitude. Remind them what, what you have shown them. Ask them for permission to call them. If you want to phone them, thank you, thank them, thank them as well. Send them a message later to remind them of the ad they click on. Ask them for permission to call them and have an appointment with them or see them. You, you, you think about this way. If you go into every single lead doing that kind of follow-up structure, it becomes very natural. You need to make what is unnatural natural. It is, very, it is not natural for us to call a total stranger and have conversation with them and speak to them on the phone for one to two minutes. I don't even speak to my own mother more, more than one to two minutes on the phone. What more a stranger, right? So it's just not natural and we all have to accept that, right? All we need to think about is consistently look at how can we systemize the way we do things so that every single lead comes in. This is the way I'm going to take charge of the leads. Right? Thank you very much. Just follow up. Yes, Elaine, we will talk about follow up a lot. We will, we will, as we go along the weeks, we will, we will talk about follow ups. Because when you follow up correctly, you are actually. Um, uh, utilizing the leads that you're running. Because when you're not following up, someone else is. When you're not following up, someone else is. And you, the way you follow up is when you are able to tag the context according to its quality or according to its readiness to buy or according to how you, you, you kind of um, tag them to, to see what stage they are in. For example, one of the questions I will encourage everyone to ask. Right. If you are interested to buy this property or buy a property, what at what point in time? Like, what's your time frame? 30, 60, 90 days. If you are looking at clients right now, they are looking to buy property in 30, 60, 90 days. Put tag them 30, 60, 90 days. Then you know this buyer you must follow with higher intensity. There are some buyers who is not 100 percent ready. He said that hey, I'm only ready to buy next year. That's why you must ask those three questions. Right, number one. Why are you buying? Number two, how soon must you buy? Number three, what's stopping you from buying? If you don't ask these questions, you cannot follow up properly because you know why? You don't know how intense and how frequent should you follow up. A customer that is ready to buy in 30, 60, 90 days, you have to be intense. You better be intense. You better hold on to that customer as long as you can because a customer that is ready to buy 30, 60, 90, is really, really, really a serious buyer, potentially a serious buyer. So you put that as category A. If a client says, hey, look, I'm really looking to sell my house first, then only I can buy kind of thing, then work on selling his house. Put selling his house as a priority, not buying the house, because that's a major problem, right? Or if this person say, I'm unsure, I'm thinking about only maybe in six months' time, nine months' time, ask them these questions. And then they will tell you six to nine months, then you put them in a different intensity, follow up. When you tag them correctly, right, you realize actually, right, the follow-up is still viable and possible because maybe in your database, there's only 10 that is ready to buy in 3690. And out of these 3690, maybe only three or four that you'll be working very closely with. But don't forget about the rest, right? Put That's where, that's where a smart plan helps. 
That's where a smart plan helps because then you can have a smart plan for people who are only buying in one year. You have a smart plan for people who are buying 30, 60, 90. So following up this way is what we call a systematic way. Understand what I'm trying to say? The systematic way in how you want to do a follow-up. This is very critical. This is the one that normally translates sales. This is the one that normally translates profit because this is where the majority of your work, 90% of your work should be somewhere here. It's calling and following up. If you choose to use lead gen as campaign as your main, as a lead gen source, right? Because this happens, because this happened automatically, right? This is the part when it comes over to this side. This is the part where the majority of your work is being done. Make sense so far? Yes, there is something today. Yes or yes? Okay, I'm going to open the floor for questions. Uh, 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 what's your support? Any questions for them for us right now? Any questions? So far, no. I think you have answered most of it. Yeah. Right. Any questions? Right. Someone mentioned in our work chat, our workplace, people tend not to share their needs on the first call. Absolutely. They won't share a lot of things on the first call. Hey, guys, they're not going to tell you their lives, but if they don't know you, right? So what's important? Meet them. Going to the house, meeting them at the house for an appointment or the house that you want to show them, right? It's an opportunity to get to know them. And after the first two hours of meeting, right, you give them reports, you, you contribute to them first, then you will build that relationship. Then they will tell you, okay, actually, I want to buy in 60 days, actually, I want to buy in 30 days, right? So you need to come from contribution first, right? So okay. don't expect someone to just straight away give you that answer. Yeah, any questions? Well, that's one from Princeton. He said that he agreed sometimes after uh, he has assisted the agent moving, um, he asked the, uh, the, uh, the agent right to follow up, but some agent don't want to follow up. Um, don't want to say, don't want to keep on disturbing customer and expect customer to follow up with the agent. Okay. Most of the time, yeah. customer goes to other company due to no follow up. Okay, I, I think uh, this is also because I think there's no hyper local agent, right? That's why the agent, the customer don't see them as the aid. I mean, for example, Clinton is an agent of uh, that locality. Can we say that? That's why the yeah. customer end up getting it back to Clinton instead of going to another company. Yeah, so this is the problem is if you expect the customer to follow up with you, then Unless you are so good, uh, unless your this thing is so good, uh, like, like this thing, the people are lining up to buy from you, maybe you can afford to do that. Like, tell, tell me in this season, how many people have you got people lining up to buy from you? Eh? Don't have, uh, unless you've got multiple offers in this house, this house is so hot, right? Whatever house you have, there are 10, 20 people lining up for you. Then maybe, yes, you can go and expect the customer to follow you. But today, I don't think we can do that. We can afford to do that. It's important for you to follow up and uh, try to understand what this, the minute a person walks to a sales gallery or he goes to see a house, there is a need there. That's why he's going to see the house, he's looking at it. The challenge could be he's not ready for it. Maybe he's not sure. So you need to go in and ask how, what, when are they ready to buy? Why are they ready to buy? You need to ask those questions. If you allow the customer to follow up on you, right, it's, it, it's the reverse role. They won't follow up because they will look at whoever is adding value to them first. So you need to add value to them first, right? Right. If you are, yeah, you have a hyper local agent, or if you're an agent who who always add value and show them options and ask them, hey, what is there anything else can I support you if what is the next thing that you want to see? What is the support? You need to know what's happening. Our job shouldn't be just opening the door and showing people the house. If you want to do that. That's, that kind of approach is no longer relevant. I'm going to be very serious you guys. If you're not able to consult and not able to journey with the age, the client and you, you just want to open the door and show someone something, that's not valuable. The income you're earning right now, 2 to 3%. If you're selling a house of a million ringgit or 500,000, you're talking about 10,000 to 20,000 ringgit in one transaction you will get. That's a lot of money. No, my wife always joked with me. My wife is a lawyer, right? She said, uh, your agent, uh, your life very easy one. Be all lawyers uh, get squeezed and get discounted all the time. Uh, 
Because the agent first will discount the, the law, ask to squeeze the lawyer, discount the lawyer, and the agent ask permission from the lawyer. And then the, the same amount of transaction, there's so much paper, so much risk, and yet she's paid about 10 to 20% of what they're getting paid. Which means, right, the value that we are giving, right, we are getting, right, is very high. Are we giving back the same value? Are we showing back the same value to the clients? Right, so following up and adding value to them is very important. Do not allow the client to follow up you. You should be following up. Right, that's, the, that's how I look at it. There you go. Anyone got any more questions? Any thoughts? Any ahas? Would you advise in the first message say, no, I, myself, I have not met Max so before, what will the hook? I would first thank them. I will still be, be, be in gratitude with them. I will show them the ad on WhatsApp, what I have sent to them. I will ask them questions like, hey, when will be a right time for me to give you a call so that I can send you or give you relevant information that will help you in your home, home buying search? I'll ask them, can I call you? Now, if they don't answer, I assume I can call them. I always say this, in the absence of any answer, I'm assuming they say yes for me to call. And I'll call them the next day. But I'll let them know in that message. After I call them, no pick up, send another message. Call, no pick up, send another message. Now, how frequent you want to do it, maybe for the lead that doesn't answer your call, you spend a week on it. Once it's on a weekly basis, when there's no response, put it into a smart plan for a one year, one year follow up. That, that's how I that's how I will advise you guys to do it, right? Then, then I will ask for appointment. I always ask for the appointment to meet that person. Now you can meet it on Zoom or physical, especially for owners, right? I need to meet them. I will never take the listing if I never seen the property or not meet them. Can I use it? Of course. As, as absolutely same message because it's the same concept. It's not about technology, right? It's about human being relating to each other. Are we relating correctly? Are we connecting correctly as a human being? If you take away, if you put only technology, right, without a human interaction, right, it won't work, one. It really won't work. It's the human being that's important. What is the practical way to follow up lead that's quiet? Um, give it some time, give them a three, one month to two months, and then just keep following up, uh, automatically sending emails, message on smart plans. Um, that will be practical. Um, then you, you will categorize this lead as a cold lead. In your tab, just put cold. Right, follow up on warm leads. Your goal is to create more warm leads and more leads that, that potentially um, have, uh, what do you call that, interest to buy first. So you must categorize that. So that some of these cold leads um, shouldn't take a lot of your time. So when you focus on warm leads first, you'll find that you're actually more productive. You'll find more, com you'll tr find more confidence when you're talking to people that's responding. This is, it's not fun to connect with people that don't respond with you. But if you don't connect with enough people, you won't see response. You, you understand what I'm trying to say? You should be connecting with many people to find the people that you need to connect with you. In the quantity, there is the quality. If you don't do enough quantity, you cannot get the quality. Does that make sense? Right? Always remember, in the quantity, there is quality. Don't expect to find quality without quantity. Don't work. Okay, we have we, we have we are running out of time right now. Is there any announcement for you to make? What's your support? Is there any announcement for me to make? Yes, there is announcements. Yeah, please put on the chat. Please put on the, the, the screen, please. Okay, so next week we will be doing another session. Now, put in the chat room right now. What are the, some of the topics on technology or command that you want to listen to more on the Monday morning? I want you to put in the chat box or you can put it in the chat room here in the, in, on Workplace um, so that we know that we are bringing you the right um, messages or the right uh, topics that will help you in your business. Like for example, do you think today's one is, is, is something that is helpful for you, right? So give us your feedback on what you think is something that you all want to hear and we will try to curate those uh, for you guys. Next slide, please but it's happening every Monday right now, okay? We have another workshop for beginners every Wednesday. 
um, from 2 to 3 p.m. every Wednesday. This is happening for those who have yet to be on board. Um, we have about 37% of all our agents in our company have now on board command right now as of this month. So we have seen that, so it's very helpful. Thank you very much, but I want more people to be on board, right? So join us every Wednesday from 2 to 3 p.m. Next slide, please. And we have this live training on setting up. Remember, we said about um, the Facebook part, right? So Winnie has done a very good job. We have kind of contracted Winnie to support all our agents in the whole of Redfield or KW to help them to set up their Facebook properly, right? And she's been very, very helpful and very, very um, uh, uh, diligent in, in looking at certain steps. And there are many step-by-step -step setup stuff that they are doing right now. So please sign up for this, this, this session uh, with Winnie, right? Uh, she's really good. Next session, please. Next step, please. So thank you very much, guys. My last aha for you today is this. Um, can you can share the screen? My last aha for you all today is this. Um, go ask yourself how your business is doing. Always audit your business. Always ask yourself what's not working. And always ask and look at someone else. How come it's working for them? How come it's not working for me? And if you look at running campaigns, for example, this is how I approach life. I always approach life by looking at, hey, what's my problem? What's the issue that we have right now? Let's look at where the problem is. Because if you know that all this is pretty much set up already, then is these two parts here, right? What is inside here that needs to change? What is inside here that needs to change? Now, when you change and modify and you rectify certain things, you will find that certain things will be working, right? And if it's not working, go back to the drawing board. Ask yourself, what else? In the area of creating ad, what do I need to improve? What do I need to learn again? Now, I'm thinking of running the Brandon Kane session again. I'm going to check whether the video is still available for us to run. But I'm thinking of running the Brandon Kane session again um, somewhere in the next couple of weeks because uh, I think a lot of people have not watch that yet. So I want to run that training again where Brandon King is speaking. I cannot post that video because we don't have the rights to reuse the video for everyone else, but I can show the video. So I'm thinking of doing that uh, somewhere next two weeks so that you all can understand how to create a, a better ad, right? So remember this, guys. Approach your business by troubleshooting. Don't shoot the people, shoot the trouble. Don't shoot yourself, shoot the trouble. Should what is not working, focus on it, solve it, and move on to it. And that's how life is. There will be never a time there is no challenge. One. There cannot be a time where there's like zero challenge, zero problem. It doesn't exist that way, right? So life is full of challenges and problems. The better version of ourselves uh, is going to be focusing on how to move on and how to move onward and uh, go against that challenge, right? So I hope this week, this session will help you um, you can watch it again on Facebook Live, or sorry, on uh, Workplace Live, or watch it again on YouTube. I hope this session today will set the tone for your week this week to look at your approach in your business and figure out how you identify where the challenges are, you clarify the challenges, and then you modify or you rectify your challenges, okay? I wish you all the best. Have a good rest of the week. See you guys next week. Thank you very much.